The stream is live. It's is Thursday, it right? Today's Thursday? Yes. Thank goodness. I'm really glad that it's Thursday. Yeah, we're Same. chatting along. You guys happy? Happy day. Happy Thursday to everybody out there. If you haven't already, you, you should totally check out our, our locals group and also our Facebook insiders group because those are your peeps. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very, very sweet for those people who are already members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the support because we really, really appreciate it. And those yep. groups, by the way, are different. And a lot of people ask how. So really quickly, uh, the Facebook Insiders group is great for people who spend a lot of time on Facebook um, because a lot of people do. And a lot of people, that's just where they are from a social media standpoint. However, the drawback to the Facebook group is um, that it is censored, right? Facebook is as Facebook is. Well, I mean, it's and run so, by, it's run by Zuckerberg. That's right. the drawback, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's from a lot of times, nine. Yeah. A lot of times people get their right. content removed and their comments removed and it's all, you always have to worry about kind of what you say there and it's always fact check and it's always that kind of nonsense. Uh, but it's a great group of people nonetheless. And of course there's great interaction totally. there. Local supporters, on the other hand, is its own social media platform. So it's like, you know, people, it, you're either spending time there or you're not. But if you're a person who regularly likes to go somewhere that you know is a free speech platform and you can say whatever you want without fear of any kind of blocking or moderation or whatever, then local supporters is where you want to be. So that's really the two differences. But as far as content, the exclusive content from us will always be posted both places. Both places, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mock is like, helps. her house is coming along, so she's probably going to be putting some more house stuff in there. There's get, definitely yeah. after spring break, for sure. There will be a ton of stuff about the house yeah. progress, mm -hmm. um, which is a good reminder, too, that spring break is coming. And you guys, we will be off uh, the entire first week of April, like the whole week. Yep. She will be doing all the South Carolina things, and I will be doing all the doing like cleaning out my attic and, and stuff like that things and redoing my office. I'm going to redo my whole office. So you guys may, it may look a little different when we come back because I'm redoing mm -hmm. things in here. So Already. Yeah. just mark your calendars or whatever you yeah. need to do to remind you that um, we will not be here that first week of April. Mm -hmm. um, also, there could potentially be chaos here in the house, my house this morning have internet. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like I don't have internet, but I'm hot spotted to my phone right now. And our home internet is down and the technician is coming between eight and 10 this morning, which is basically now um, until, you know, or sometime between now and 10. So if the door, if somebody knocks at the door, the dogs are going to lose their minds and there's going to be barking and there's going to be just some chaos. So I just wanted to make sure People are prepared. I just, I feel like just based on my experience with internet people, that means that they'll be there at 10 o'clock, <laughs> which would be fine because yeah. then there will be no disruption. Mm -hmm. um, right. But if you all of a sudden hear like a lot of commotion, I will try to keep focused, that's but that's what that is. Mm -hmm. um, and then speaking of that, I should also point out for anybody who's interested that my Ella dog is, she is right underneath my feet. She is. I would say 95% back to normal. See, she's Look doing at that. great. Look yeah, at she's that. doing great. So yay for my Ella girl. And yay she's for old ladies. Yay right? for old ladies. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't discount an old lady, stubborn old lady. That's right. Saying. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so people are already saying, oh my gosh, a whole week. Yes, you guys will miss so we'll, you yeah, too. We'll, we'll be here all next week, but it's the week after that. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And we will be here on Eclipse Day. So, you know, we're that's right in the morning. So you won't miss anything mm -hmm. by watching our show. You won't miss the eclipse happening. What is it? I think th sometime between three and four that afternoon. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you won't miss anything. Um, I'm like, oh, there it is. My pen. I was like, like lost without my pen. <laughs> um, let's before we get into the Bobolinsky stuff, because, of course, that was a huge, 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 huge deal yesterday. And we have so many clips that there's only word to describe Tony Bobolinsky. And it is based. That is the only word. He was based yesterday. There were so many good clips, so many things that we need to share. Um, but a couple things that we need to share about Joe Biden really quick, just like little um, random lines. First of all, he has imposed new regulations to phase out gas cars completely by 2032, which is like 
tomorrow, essentially. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? That's so soon. There's how, how is he going to do this? How, how do you phase out gas cars? What do you, how does, what does that even look like? Well, it looks like they can't sell gas cars anymore. New gas cars cannot be created as of that time. It's just, and so you're going to keep your, you know, you can keep whatever you got now, but if you want to buy a gas powered car in 2032, you are SOL. I'm, That's I was like last night I was with my husband. I was, I want to buy like an old truck. I saw like a 1970, like old Ford truck. I want to, I want to, that's what I want to do. I want to start buying like old things and, and just put my middle finger up at this administration. Yeah. I'm old, I, big things, old big, giant, giant things. <laughs> gas guzzling things. Seriously. <laughs> what? This is outrageous. It is. It's, and it's, it's never going to work. It's never, it's just not, it's, I don't, they always have a lot of great ideas, but they don't think through the great ideas that oh, I say great ideas. They don't think through their ideas. They don't look at the long game. It, it's just not going to work. I don't well, see and it's already happening. not working. Like the car companies are losing so much money on these right. EVs already. This is mm -hmm. a complete disaster. And I would hope that all of the auto workers, the actual workers, not the union bosses, but the actual workers see the writing on the wall and that they know when it comes time for election, they know which way to vote because all of these regulations do nothing but hurt people, like hurt workers. And it hurts our economy. It hurts our national security. It hurts everything about America, which, of course, makes perfect sense. And that's why Biden's doing it, because he clearly hates the country. I, I don't yeah. even know what other conclusion to draw. At he, this should point. Just, he should just hire Boeing to start making cars. <laughs> right. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> And then also, speaking of how much Biden hates the country, apparently 200,000 deportation cases had to be dismissed because he forgot to file paperwork. That's, who's shocked? Raise your hand. I can't. I cannot. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's deport. Listen, <laughs> like, like a lot of these people are here to, st most of these people, the majority of these people are here to stay. And vote yeah, them. Yeah, just, yeah, they're here to stay, them, I guess. And they're all with with a big D after their name. That's the whole point. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So, so furious. Yeah. Um, can we just take a moment to pause really quickly oh, and no. talk about Don? We can do it. <laughs> There's do it. nobody with a better dog voice than you. There just isn't. <laughs> That's why I have so many. I have so many dogs, you guys. They all come running. Oh my God. This Rough Greens green powder that was formulated by naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black is amazing for your dogs and they love, love, love to eat it. It is so good for their coats, for their energy, for their breath, for their health. It is so, so good for them. Let me just share with you a testimonial from Scott from Anchorage. Bring it, Scott. Scott said, <laughs> Scott said, <laughs> our. He was a puppy with thyroid and arthritis issues. The biggest improvement we've seen is his coat. It is so soft and he doesn't shed nearly as much. Yay. He seems to have more energy and we haven't had to have monthly allergy shots yet. So that is all good stuff. Plus, he seems to really like the rough greens and sticks his nose up when it's chow time. Thank you. <laughs> I, think I love that. That particular dog sounds like a very high maintenance dog. I'm just right, kind of a it. diva. It's okay. Kind Nothing wrong with that. Kind of diva. It's fine. But rough, rough greens works for any dog, and they they love, love, love the taste of it. And try it for free. You can get a free jumpstart trial bag at roughchicks.com. That's r u f f chicks dot com. Oh my gosh, super stickers! Thank you, Anastasia sixty three says I support you on Facebook and locals, but mostly watch you on YouTube because at work that platform doesn't break up. I support a lot on locals. Thank you so much for being a member of both places. That means the world to us. Yes, it uh, does. Leanne Hollingsworth, thank you so much. That is very very generous. Thank you, uh, Desiree D. Thank you. She says sending my first super chat on my birthday. LOL. Love starting my day with you, ladies. So glad I found you four years ago. Have a great day. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. That's awesome. And thank you. And thank you, Connie Cannell. Connie says, prayers for my son-in-law. He is having back surgery tomorrow morning. He is oh. only 43. He's been in pain for five years. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hopefully well, that if help it's him. like a... Yeah, if it's, if it's like a it disc helps. surgery, it's easy peasy, mm -hmm. quick recovery. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. that's all it is. 
Uh -huh. um, and Laura Cantor, thank you so much. Laura says, what happened to I-9 forms upon hiring to prove citizenship? Well, I, I mean, when I was still back in my HR days, we were still using them all the time. But the problem is, is that there's way too many employers who don't care if they're hiring illegals. That's and that's true. why they keep coming because we keep incentivizing it. So if you work at a company that employs illegals, you may want to be asking your bosses, WTF yeah. are you doing? Because you're part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. All right. Let's get into the Bobolinsky stuff. So um, I tried to put this to put these clips in as good of an order, I guess, as I could, um, because there, you know, we'll, we'll start out with a little bit of his opening. Obviously, we're not going to play the whole thing. But again, <laughs> this was very based testimony. The best part about Tony Bobolinsky is he will call out members of Congress readily and happily, and he annihilates them on many occasions, much to their chagrin. So you're going to see one clip where Jamie Raskin just absolutely loses his mind. He utterly humiliates AOC. He humiliates Dan Goldman. There's so many good things to share from Tony Bobolinsky's uh, hearing yesterday. So we'll start with a piece of his opening because this was the day that Hunter Biden was also set to appear. And there was a seat reserved for Hunter Biden right next to Tony Bobolinsky. And so because Hunter didn't show, this is how Tony started his opening. Should I allow Hunter to give his opening statement first? We'll, uh, doesn't appear Mr. Biden showed up for his public hearing, so we'll recognize you, Mr. Bobolinsky. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> oh, my God. Is Again. I paste. <laughs> he's awesome. I know. I love this guy. So great. Um, and so in his opener, and I don't even remember how long his whole opening statement was, but in it, he makes it very, very clear that Biden has always been Joe Biden, I mean, has always been the brand. He's always been the thing that's for sale. Here he is. I want to be crystal clear from my direct personal experience and what I've subsequently come to learn. It is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the fam Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who are seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United States government. Joe Biden was more than a participant in and a beneficiary of his family's business. He was an active, aware enabler who met with business associates such as myself to further the business, despite being buffered by a complex team to maintain plausible deniability. I ask this big question. If there's no evidence of corruption here today, if Joe's conduct and the conduct of his family were fully legal and proper, then why are they so dishonest about it? At the Bingo. It's a great freaking question, isn't it? Right? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. And this is when this is the part of his opener that got really spicy because he called out um, Dan Goldman. And who was the other person that he called out? for saying that they are big fat liars. It may be Jamie Raskin actually. And Jamie Raskin absolutely loses his mind. And so there's this like point of order hysteria and it's just, <laughs> the whole thing is glorious. This is the one clip that runs just a tad long because nothing can be left Same out. Same people preaching this mantra know better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. <laughs> Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. state the cold hard facts M Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client <laughs> and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy. At Navy's elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, I later served as the, chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. <laughs> Proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the... Okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. <laughs> but please, J Mr. Bobolinsky, please. <laughs> okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Bobolinsky, please okay, proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Can well, Mr. Chairman, it saved his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just oh. want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, 
the, do the, does it apply or does it not? Oh, my God. This is hilarious. I know. Should it's I such dress? a clown show. No, <laughs> he called me a liar. Is he allowed to do that? We need to check the rule book. There's hard li- there's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. Yeah. Thank you. So, so uh, <laughs> don't uh, he- make sure we didn't uh, waste any of his time on the opening statement. Mr. Bobolinsky, I'm sorry for the disruption. Please continue your opening <laughs> yeah. statement. I think uh, you, Mr. Ashton, used we'll, we'll make sure it's right. We'll oh, okay, make sure it's great. I just want to restate... Uh, Make sure the American people hear all these facts. Abby Lord, Mr. <laughs> That's my favorite. He <laughs> gives no shits at all. Right? That's why None. I just love him. I love, I love that so, so much. much. He's beyond giving any <laughs> any craps at this point. And I just, I respect that. I do. Right? It's mm-hmm. just impossible not to. And I love that it just dug at Jamie Raskin so he's like, hard. He's, not he's not so mad. To- you can't call me those words. You can't do it. I'm the one sitting up here. You can't do it. I'm a Let's congressman. Check. Let's check the rule book. I'm a congress. You can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it even harder. Mm-hmm. Just you wait. <laughs> I do it so hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> So then Jim Jordan, uh, when it was his time, he wanted to make sure that it was all cleared up, that there was no confusion anymore about who the big guy is. Bob Alinsky, who's the big guy? Are you sure about that? Because when Jordan, when, uh, Joe sure? Biden, sure. I'm a thousand percent sure. Because when Hunter Biden did his deposition under oath, he said, I don't know who it is, even though he was copied on an email that said H will hold 10 percent for the big guy. You sure it's the big guy is, is Joe Biden? A thousand percent. And there's other text messages that back that up that the brave whistleblowers, Shapley and Ziegler, have produced not from my phones, not from my Blackberry that I took screenshots from. They took them from subpoenas directly from Apple's iCloud that back up the fact that Hunter knew the big guy was Joe Biden. The big guy is the brand. The big guy is the lift. The big guy is the one who showed up at golf outings, who did took phone calls and meetings and lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business associates. Is that right? Correct. Okay, so he lied. Surprise! <laughs> so he's and that big... goes back to his question. Mm-hmm. If they did nothing wrong, why do they continue to lie? The fact that now we know that Hunter Biden in his private desp- uh, deposition claimed to not know I mean, who the on. big guy is? Are exactly. you serious? Exactly. So you're either a liar or you're stupid. Exactly. And I think we know... Well, and in this case, I mean, it's both. It's both. <laughs> <laughs> it's both. <laughs> exactly. Um, so Representative Smith uh, wanted to hit home further about whether or not Hunter lied. Phone. Mr. Bobolinsky, was Hunter Biden telling the truth when he testified under oath that his father was never involved in any of his business dealings? No, he was not. Those are all blatant lies. Just gonna leave it right there. Lie, 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 lie. Fake, fake, (laughs) fake. Exactly. Everywhere. (laughs) God. So then I'm we're taking a momentary break from the actual hearing to listen to the spin from uh, Democrat Jessica Tarlov. Oh. And you'll see why in just a second, because here is what Democrats are so good at. They are so good. Even after that whole many, many hours of testimony, they are so good at gaslighting or trying to gaslight America into believing that all the receipts that they were just given don't actually exist, that they're not actual proof of anything. Mm -hmm. And it's extraordinary. So first you're going to hear Jessica try to make that claim. And then immediately after that, you're going to see Byron Donalds give all the receipts. Okay. So we're just going to let those two things play together. Here's Jessica first. Third day where it was readily apparent that James Comer and the Republicans are not ready for prime time, let alone 10 a.m., which is when everyone stopped paying attention to this. Comer has been told and Jim Jordan has been told in nearly every interview that they've done, hey, maybe you could tell us what's actually going on here. Where is the money transfer? Uh, Put up or shut up. And they don't have it. Now, here's where the fun stuff comes in, everybody. And I got a minute to do it. So we're going to get this done. On August 14, 
there is $150,000 that is transferred from a Owasco PC, which is controlled by Hunter Biden, to Lion Hall Group, which is controlled by James Biden. I have the records here, Mr. Chairman, of the $150,000 that has gone to Lion Hall Group from Owasco PC. I want to submit that for the record. Without objection, to ordered. On August 28th, and I believe we have a screenshot for everybody in the room. On August 28th, Mr. Chairman, we have the withdrawal ticket from Lion Hall Group that is signed by Sarah Biden, who is the wife of Jim Biden, for $50,000 to withdraw from Lion Hall Group. I want to submit that withdrawal receipt for the record. Without objection, to ordered. On September 3rd, on August 28th, actually, Mr. Chairman, we have deposit reference into Sarah Jones Biden's account on the same day she withdrew it from Lion Hall. I want to submit Without that. Without objection, to ordered. Last document. On September 3rd, 2007, from Sarah Biden's own personal account, there is a check that is written to, to Joseph Rock. Biden Jr., the president of the United States today, for $40,000, signed loan repayment. A loan repayment, by the way, that Joe Biden's own personal accountant, Mr. Eric Schwerin, has no record for. I want to submit that for the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, to ordered. To the members of the committee, it is clear that the source of this money came from CEFC, and that CEFC is a company that is directly linked to the CCP and, and uh, actually the chairman of the CCP, the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, Chairman Xi Jinping. With that, I yield. Oh, look, receipts. Look at that. Look, Jessica. I mean, what else do they need? Yeah, she's I just like, la, 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 <laughs> la. That's Jessica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, they just don't, they can't. They can't believe it. They don't want to believe it. They refuse. They refuse. This is what it's they're going to do. It's incredible. It's absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. But you guys, Trump is orange. He's bad and he's orange. <laughs> So and we got we got to put him in jail. We got to do everything we can to, to get rid of him and put him in jail. And the Bidens are awesome. This is what they're going to continue <laughs> to spin. They're, they're going to say this is what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to the based man himself. Um, apparently, a few years back, he had some very lovely email exchanges with Ro Khanna and Ro was present initially at this hearing. Um, and even though they've been very friendly in the past and Roe has even used words to describe Tony Bobulinski, such as highly credible, he would not even look at him. And so Tony called him out. Good. Mr. Chairman. Donalds, I'd just actually uh, like to spend 20 seconds. If you noticed, uh, Congressman Khanna scurried out of here very quickly. <laughs> and I'm actually disgusted as I sit here that he didn't address me based on the fact that I'm sitting here in front of the world trying to testify to the truth. In October 2020, I have messages I'm willing to produce to both the Democrats and the Republicans that Ro Khanna sent to me saying, you have never... You have always demonstrated to me that you're nothing but an honest with the highest integrity individual. And I was begging for him to go on CNN and tell the world in October 2020. I have extensive emails with Congressman Ro Khanna in 2021 and 2022 where I begged him and his staff to sit down with me and look at my BlackBerry phones that the Democrats are so focused on to hire forensics experts and go through all of the factual information I had. So the fact that he did not even address me and then scurried out of here is disgusting to me all right sorry mr donalds I'll <laughs> i mean this is the thing they'll do anything they can to protect their own anything yep. think. it's gross these people have no integrity i don't know how they sleep at night it's amazing yeah it's, it's remar amazing. it is truly really remarkable isn't it it's like mm -hmm. at the end of your life you're gonna have to account for all these things so good luck with that honestly <laughs> There was a uh, Nancy Mace did a in her five minutes. This was actually um, kind of amazing to watch in her five minutes because, you know, they only get their five minute a lot of time. So she had so much to get to. And so she had yes or no questions for Bobulinski and the other gentleman that was testifying. And she went through them rapid fire. So she was like, did Hunter do this? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Did um, Joe Biden do this? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm like that for four minutes and 40 seconds right and so it this is the very conclusion of that rapid fire he has repeatedly claimed that he was not involved in in hunter biden jim biden or any other biden family business deals today our witnesses have proved otherwise 
Today we've established Joe Biden lied about interacting with Hunter Biden's business associates. It is my belief Joe Biden is the closer for Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, and their business associates and foreign interests. Good luck to the left proving otherwise. Thank you. I yield back. Yeah. Good luck indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the thing. I Okay, I I know we're going to get to it, but like I just I wonder if anything will actually happen. You know, we've been watching this for years. We've been waiting and watching and wondering what happens with all of this. Yeah. Do you, well, and there you, was a you're, moment, po- you're positive. You're positive about it. I'm staying positive for now. There was there was a moment where I can't even remember which Democrat like started pestering um, Jim Jordan saying, if you have all this evidence, why not just take the impeachment vote? Just do it. I dare you. Like it was all put them up. <laughs> It was so ridiculous. And Jim Jordan was, he very calmly said, I'll tell you why. It's because when we do impeachment proceedings, we actually go through and make sure we know what the F we're talking about. Right. Totally paraphrasing. My word's not his. Yes. Um, and he was like, we do this by the book and we're going to continue to do it and we're going to do it right. That's how we do it. Mm-hmm. Unlike all y'all. And so that you're just I, like, I he's orange. About that. He's orange. Let's, imp- <laughs> right. let's impeach. He's, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I do. Um, but still it just, it like, we have so many snakes on our side that it's it makes, true. that it makes me nervous. It does. And I just, I, I don't have a lot of faith in a lot of people on our side of the aisle, which that's where my trepidation is. It's not yeah. so, it's not even so much that I, you know, that there is a two tier system of justice, which there is, there's that, but it's our side, not even being able to rally for our own let alone yeah. to Im- impeach somebody who actually deserves to be impeached, you know? So I, that's, I, I just worry about that. I just, I you know. know I'm trying mm-hmm. to think positive though. I know. And I listen, <laughs> I look at that. We're flipping again. <laughs> this is what we do. This is why our marriage is so successful. <laughs> I know totally. <laughs> um, quick break because the next little grouping of videos is all the Democrats trying to, trying to take up, take it up with Tony Bobulinski, they all get absolutely annihilated. And it's such a thing of beauty. And you're, you're going to enjoy it so much. But yesterday we were talking about the eclipse and all of these warnings from above saying you got to stock up and you got to like have fuel and two weeks worth of food and like water and all the stuff to prepare for the chaos that's going to happen as a result of the eclipse. And so, I mean, you and I were basically like, everybody just, calm down. I think everybody should have moments of darkness. Everybody should have it anyway. Everybody should, should be prepared for anything, not just the eclipse, but anything and everything anyway. So you should always have, I mean, you should be visiting for patriots.com and, and looking at all the stuff that they have anyway and, and getting some of this stuff and being prepared now for the inevitable crap that's probably going to come down. (laughs) Anyway, don't you, don't you think? Well, absolutely. And it, and it made me think like after our show yesterday, I was like, wow, I hope, you know, I hope that the message that the takeaway from that eclipse conversation was that we, we are discouraging people from having an emergency supply of anything. Like, cause we're not, that is something we're all about. Just, we, we were just saying that just for the eclipse, it, we we just couldn't understand the hullabaloo, but it is super important that you always have a, like a few months worth of food, emergency always. food on hand, mm-hmm. like tons of bottled water on hand. And that is why we so appreciate our friends at fourpatriots.com slash chicks. Right now, when you go to that website, fourpatriots.com slash chicks, they talk all about their deluxe. This is their number one best selling three month survival food kit. And this ha- it's lasts 25 years. It is 712 servings of super yummy, super easy to make meals that will protect you in the long haul. And when you buy this kit right now, they send you a new gift package separately of all kinds of goodies that is worth $363. So it's a mega deal to get your hands on this right now for patriots.com slash chicks is the website and uh remember any order over 97 dollars, you get free shipping as well so check that out i'll get a water filter that's like and a water filter one of the most important things to get is a water filter that's all indeed Mm -hmm. uh let me get to some thank yous really quickly to shelly thank you so much (laughs) shelly ethington says watching this was almost as painful as the tooth extraction i had yesterday morning oh at least it was a great distraction from the pain (laughs) (laughs) oh no 
Curio 23 says, sounds like a bloodbath on Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you use that word? Hashtag bloodbath. Um, <laughs> and Kimberly Clark, thank you. Kimberly says, lying liar wearing liar pants. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, okay, so let's start off with Dan Goldman. Dan Goldman had himself a little tantrum as well. Very, very unhappy with Tony Bobulinski. And here is his attempt to try to get him. You provided the committee with a screenshot of a text message that uh, is between James Gilliard and you, dated May 11th, 2017. You see this? I don't know if you can see it. If you can't see, it's uh, just you and James Gilliard, though, right? You remember this text message, I'm sure. Uh, generally, yes. All right. And in it, Gilliard writes, man, you are right. Let's get the company set up, then tell H and family the high stakes and get Joe involved. And two days later, Mr. Gilliard sent an email to you, CCing Rob Walker and Hunter Biden, in which he suggested a division of the company and included a proposal of, quote, 10% held by H for the big guy, question mark. You remember that, right? Uh, the infamous e uh, email with the big guy? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, did anyone ever respond to that email? Yes, they did. Numerous times. Sorry. Hunter Biden ever, himself excuse me, did. Excuse me. I, you're right. Well, no, did I think that's ever, important because sir, Hunter Biden has claimed that he didn't can you respond to it. And he responded okay. to it. The, I believe, you're just going to filibuster. I reclaim my time that's running out. But I will say, <laughs> no one responded to the big guy reference for 10. Thank you so for making my what? point. They didn't have to respond right. because then, they all knew the big sir, guy was Joe I Biden. I reclaim my time. Mr. Chairman, please control the witness. I would like to <laughs> control him. Control the witness. Yeah, buddy, you've lost complete oh control. God. I love it's the it's the greatest. Like Isn't you probably it? maybe you shouldn't have gone with that line of questioning, you schmuck. <laughs> you may have wanted to reconsider oh my that. God. You didn't think that through, did you, Dan? <laughs> You oh just try God. to reclaim your precious time, you absolute you get, hack. It basically, he's like, can I go back in time? Can I just, like, go back? Can we just rewind time? Because I want to do that whole thing over again and not do it. That's what I really want to do. <laughs> you can't do that, Dan. Oh you my can't God. do it. The amount yeah. that I love that clip, I cannot it's, overstate it. It's so great. <laughs> what, what a douche canoe that guy is. <laughs> and then there was that Moskowitz character who like wore a Putin mask into the hearing and was, we're, I think that was the guy that wore the Putin Nobody, mask. I know. We're, um, not a we're not a serious country We're not a serious country, serious country. We're not a serious country, you guys. <laughs> Just not. So he decided to ask um, Tony if... Tony believes that Joe Biden should be impeached. No, you personally, do you believe he should be impeached? I do. Okay, and you believe that because you believe Chairman Comer has proven that he committed a high crime and misdemeanor? No, because I know that he committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay. I was involved and saw them happen. <laughs> so just take that, Moskowitz. <laughs> take that. <laughs> just the amount, I just love him so much. Okay, so the infamous AOC moment, right? So this uh. is where... She absolutely humiliated herself by trying inexplicably to hold Tony Bobulinski to some impossible standard, which is that he should be able to name the number of the statute of the crimes that Joe Biden has committed. Who does is, that? Nobody who, does that. Who, like who does? Nobody does. And is he a lawyer? I don't, is he, can he do that? It's like, cause I wouldn't be able to do that. And you guys probably wouldn't be able to do that. The, normal people can't do that. She doesn't even know what a garbage disposal is. Okay. <laughs> or, or how to grow vegetables. Right. Like and how they, wants, how they grow. And she wants other people to name statutes. No lady. No. Yeah. Just sit down AOC. Uh -huh. So he, <laughs> he got her so riled up. This is amazing. Is it your testimony today? that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden commit a crime. <laughs> and actually, let me just interrupt that really fast, because that doesn't matter. You can, it doesn't matter if someone has personally witnessed the crime. It doesn't mean a crime hasn't been committed. You know what I mean? Like that's, even that question alone is stupid. And that's even before she gets into the whole name the crime well, I thing. I mean, I, I think we know that this chick is stupid. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah, let's, it's let's just let her continue to hang herself. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Exactly. I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did business Did you deal, witness the president commit it, a crime? Uh, is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime... 
Do you, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name <laughs> the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor- corruption statutes, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is, Sarah. what is the crime, sir? You, you, specifically. You, just, uh, you keep, you. Uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. RICO, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption Excuse statutes. Excuse me, sir. Excuse Sarah. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What oh, is no. the it's a category of crimes that you're then charged? You have for charges. A long hundred. You have charges, yeah. sir. Please the name, name exact statute on Rico. Yes. I'll, well, it's funny in this committee room, everyone's not here. There's over eight. All right, sir. I reclaim my lawyers time. that I went to law school. Time. I I'll reclaim. Leave it at- <laughs> she wants. She also wants to reclaim her time. She wants to do that. <laughs> she wanted to reclaim it so hard. <laughs> she did. Just again, we're not a serious country. We're just not. Not nobody's serious. Like we have absolute children running the show. We do. It's, toddlers. Toddlers are running our country. You guys. Gosh, so I, I just, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, as we drew to a close, uh, Bobolinsky had a very nice summary about why this actually matters and a, str- a stern message, if you will, to the entire committee. I wish you would spend the time focusing on the fact that the Chinese Communist Party infiltrated the White House of the United States of America through the Biden family. I don't say that lightly. It's not a joke. I was willing to die for this country, as was my father and both my grandfathers and my brother. This is serious, serious. You should be asking how that happened. Take the Biden name and the Biden family completely out of it. How did the Chinese Communist Party infiltrate the White House of the United States of America? Let's start there, focus on those facts, what they did, how they did it, why they used money, why they used private enterprises instead of military stuff and other stuff. That is huge to our national security. Nobody cares. I mean, God bless him. And nobody cares. Yeah, and then Jessica Tarlov gets on TV and says they didn't even bring any receipts. Right? It's it's <laughs> no. This is oh the thing. God. I know these people just don't care. They yeah, they just want to protect their guy. That's it. Uh, they they want to protect protecting their guy. Yeah, they want to protect their dementia-ridden old man for mm-hmm. for power and money at the expense. Seriously, that's all this is about is power and money. And he is absolutely one hundred and fifty percent correct. Like this is about the, the this is about communist China infiltrating and they don't care. Like 50, 60 years ago, people, everybody would have cared about this. Yeah. Everybody, all of us would have cared about this. All of us. It would have been like a bipartisan thing. And now it is like, well, we've got to protect Joe Biden at all costs. Why? Yeah. Now we're so siloed Why? that it, it's, it's party before country. And that's exactly. sick. It, it is sick. It's gross. At the expense of America, you're doing this. Gross. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, that's um, in the same breath, these people will be like, oh, my God, Russia, Russia, Russia. Can you not right. see what is happening? Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk about gaslighting. Holy crap. So a moment of levity, if we will, if we can, because you will love this moment from Representative Mike Walls uh, referring to Swalwell. This is just thank you. Wait, just priceless. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I find it uh, incredibly rich. Mr. Swalwell is going to come to this committee and lecture us about how China penetrates our government. I think that's something <laughs> he may know a thing or two about. But let's let's talk about how China has penetrated the highest levels uh, of this government, including this president and, and this White House, because I think the visual uh, is is incredibly important. <laughs> I just love that so the much. The makes me would have been like, <coughs> fang, fang. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. And so this meme, I just thought we'll just tack this onto the end because it's so mm-hmm. perfect. Right. Christine Blasey Ford has no witnesses, no details, no memory of dates, no evidence. And the media is like, she's highly credible. So credible. <laughs> Bob Alinsky literally brings piles and piles of receipts. And the media is like, he's not credible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he served this country. He would die for this country. And they're like, what a piece of crap this guy is. Right. <laughs> Okay. God. Whatever. It's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. So yeah. anyway, if you missed out on the hearing, hopefully that gives you a nice little summary. <laughs> Those were the best parts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Michael Stellar, thank you. Michael says, not wanting to contribute anything today. I just wanted to wish you chicks an awesome day. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Awesome and to you. Luke, how, Luke 
Mark says, I second what Michael Steller said. Love you, beautiful ladies. The Dems make me sick. Hot Luke. Hot Luke. God bless everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. There were other things, uh, other things to get to, and we're going to get to them. So, for example, one of the more recent polls that has come out is showing that there are some huge improvements in Trump's numbers with blacks and Latinos and some real marked uh, decreases in those numbers for Biden. And so Abby Phillip decided to ask Hakeem Jeffries, minority leader in the House, about these polls and <laughs> I don't think he ever actually addressed that question, but um, you'll hear how he totally KJP's this answer. And a college poll that found that both black and Hispanic voters say that Donald Trump's policies has have helped them more than Joe Biden's policies by pretty wide margins, especially when you look at Hispanic voters. Is that alarming to you? that nothing that the Biden campaign has said or done to this point has brought that at least closer than it is right now in this polling. The Biden administration has an incredible track record of support, making sure that it is working at all times to build an economy from the middle out uh, and the bottom up as opposed to the top down. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's it's so you didn't answer the question. Yeah, they're going on this big rampage now for um, Latino voters because they're the Biden administration is is freaking out. And he was at a Mexican restaurant. I think we we have got the clip for that. He's at a, he was at a Mexican restaurant yesterday, and it, there was like I don't know three people there. <laughs> And right, where he's like, I need you guys need so you. bad. He's like begging him. He's begging Latinos to vote for him. And it's like, okay, so this is the same guy who has a wife who who compared Hispanics to breakfast tacos. But mm. all right, remember you make you guys remember that? Remember? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but then, and then he has the audacity to say Trump hates you. Trump hates you. Yeah. Shut here's up. here is uh, here's that clip. This election is. Uh, it's not a referendum on me. It's a it's an election between me and a guy named Trump, and uh, and uh, this is a guy who uh, whose the way he talks about the Latino community is uh, well. In 2016, he called Latinos criminal, drug dealers, and rapists when he came down that escalator. Now he says immigrants are lie. poisoning it the blood lie. of our country. You're the reason why, in large part, I beat Donald Trump. I need you. I need you badly. Oh my God! Do and you? he's like, and he's like reading it. I need you. I need you badly. <laughs> That's basically what he's doing. And how pandery is that to be at a Mexican restaurant? I know it's. Just I mean, gross. how stereotypical! Like, what a complete jerk this guy is. And he does it at the eleventh hour when he hasn't done crap for these people. Mm-hmm. And I and they they're seeing it. They know it. They see the, they know what policies are in place and they know what's helped them and what hasn't. And that's why his numbers with these people, with Hispanics and with blacks suck. That's why. Yep. And it's a pretty extraordinary, um, it's some extraordinary polling. Now, granted, you know, believe polls or don't believe polls, but the, it, you know, it, people are taking notice of these particular polling numbers. Here's Martha. And this is the story. President Biden telling Latino voters, I need your help desperately. He is trailing former President Trump by six among Latinos. These kinds of numbers are unheard of in Republican versus Democrat politics. That bodes pretty well. Well, listen, Hispanics Hispanics and black people live in the same United States as white people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, we're all living the same reality. We all go to the same grocery stores. We pay for the same gas. We send our kids to the same colleges. We do the same crap. I mean, we just all have different melanin in our skin. So who cares? You know what we I mean? Just, and we just, we all want to be safe, right? right. I mean, so this is, it, it shouldn't be a surprise, but I mean, it, like she says, this is unheard of in the, in this, at this stage of the game. And so mm-hmm. chalk one up in the Trump column. This is good stuff. Yep. Um, hot Luke. Thanks again. Luke says they're protecting Joe at all costs because they are bought by the CCP and they can come get us lock, stock and barrel. Cause they own us, own the U S That seems to be true. Laura Taylor, thank you so much. Laura says, just a little interruption. I'm walking to work and there is a raccoon in our avocado tree. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, Hello. Take pictures and immediately send them. <laughs> yes, there you go. Um, okay, moving on. Some we've got some Kennedy to get to. Senator Kennedy had a couple of fantastic moments yesterday, but before we even get to that, there was uh, this is in a UK similar type of hearing, I guess. And this is an extraordinary moment um, that some you I, I'm not even gonna set this up. You're gonna know exactly what this is about as soon as you see it, and it's just delicious. It's, it's just a couple of quick questions, please, for, for Councillor Rebecca Knox. Um, I think you, you was in agreement that your force was institutionally racist. Is that is that correct? I agreed with the rec with the report, the okay. um, independent report, and so did the chief of fire officer accept yeah. the findings. Okay, so of that can report. you please tell me, uh, Councillor, what unfair <laughs> advantages? white people have in your force? I would hope not. None. Not advantages. Did I hear you Yeah, do they correctly? have any advantages? No. Then how can you be institutionally racist? Um, I, 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 sorry, <laughs> I, I, I might have to get back to you. Uh, oh, yeah. are you going to have to get back to she's us? Gonna, yeah, she's <laughs> going to have to go back and then make some crap up and then get back to him. I mean, this is the thing. I love mm -hmm. it. When you actually just break down the arguments, mm -hmm. just like that guy did, they right. fall apart. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the women that say that everything is super sexist and then women are oppressed. And then you're like, okay, well, how, like the, the college women and the yeah. campus questions and people will say, okay, well, how, how exactly give me a specific as to how you've been oppressed. Tell me, how have you individually been oppressed? Yeah. And they're like, um, I, I have to go. I have to go I, to I, class I, now. I got to go. Because <laughs> you haven't. You haven't been oppressed. So oh shut my up. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now to Senator Kennedy. So a couple different completely unrelated clips. There was a hearing where he's talking to a judge, uh, probably a nominee that Joe Biden's putting up for something. And he's calling her out on some previous... Um, some previous things that she's attached her name to specifically the fact that she wanted to ban assault weapons and he wants her to explain what did you mean by that and it does not go well for um her. you said quote assault weapons may be banned because they're extraordinarily dangerous and are not appropriate for legitimate self-defense purposes close quote T tell me what you meant by assault weapons Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Just to clarify, <laughs> just to clarify <laughs> there, I was local counsel. Um, our Supreme- yeah, But you wrote the brief. Tell I, me what you meant by assault weapons. Senator Kennedy, actually, I, I did not write the brief. Um, the brief was written by- um, You signed the brief though, did you? Correct, I signed and the brief. You sign a brief, you're testifying to the court that everything in it is, is true, right? Yes, okay. that and, and I, I so they're your words in terms of the court, right? Well, I, you're you're correct, Senator Kennedy. Okay. I would never so sign. Tell me what you meant by assault weapons. So I, I am not a gun expert, and oh, at the time okay. that brief, I think was about but ten you years. Given the court advice about say ban assault weapons, what is I just you told the court you were you were you were an expert. Just tell me what you wanted to ban, Senator. Sitting here today, um, as I said, I did not write that brief. I was local counsel. Sign the brief. I understand. At, at the time, tell that, me what you wanted to ban. Oh my That's God, I'm, I'm I, I don't remember the exact definition of assault weapon. I'm here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that <laughs> he is. He doesn't remember. I don't know what that is. And now, in, <gasps> in in Illinois, there's a judge that ruled that illegal immigrants can have guns. They have Second Amendment rights. So this Fantastic. is happening. Yeah, but I'm sure that that same judge is like, listen, you know, regular, everyday, taxpaying American citizens shouldn't have assault weapons. You know what I mean? But illegals can have guns. This is, you guys, it's like the world is crazy. Like our <laughs> God. our country is, is complete. This is the thing. Like liberals are, it's not about the guns. It's not. It's not about the guns at this point. It's not. It's about power over the people. And everybody needs to remember that, especially when they're they're like, OK, illegals can have guns now. Like we're giving them Second Amendment rights in addition to everything else. Yeah, that they're getting. I'm, I'm surprised Sandwich. we're not actually just arming them. Yeah. Like we might as well I just mean, take it to the extreme. Well, I mean, in essence, that's what that is. I mean, they're going to go ahead and be. It's insane what's happening in Illinois, of all places. Oh, my God. Mm hmm. 
Um, Kennedy, also, there was a hearing about climate change and this absolute insolent, bratty ass kid uh, who's an Olympian skier, Gus Schumacher, was there to testify about the dangers of climate change. And Kennedy wanted to get to know him a little bit. So had, you know, did a little bit of research, some investigating on his socials and wanted him wanted to get some answers about his thoughts on things. And this kid, I mean, just so smug. Smug. He, he looks I disrespectful. Can't, I, he's not even talked, and I already want to punch him in the face. Yeah, we don't condone violence. <laughs> we on don't the condone show, violence. We don't. Condone, but fists we don't. will form. <laughs> yeah, we don't condone violence fists on this show. Form. Yeah. So here is that. Exchange. Here's an athlete giving you my story and what okay. I've seen in my on, on August 27th of 2020. This is my birthday. You tweeted this quote. I'm going to quote. Police are paid with taxpayer dollars. If they are not answerable to us, we can demand new service, and that's what this is. Abolish the police. Oh my God! In favor of that new service. End quote. Oh my God! You kid. think we ought to abolish the police? Do you? Again, not the topic I'm here to talk about today. I know, but but you tweeted it. Do you think we ought to abolish the police? That's not what I'm here to talk about. Should we do that before or after we get rid of fossil fuels? I'm not going to address that. That's... Yeah, you don't want to address it. Okay. You just want to tweet uh, about let me it. Ask you about one more of your tweets. On August 26, 2020. Uh oh. <laughs> you tweeted. <laughs> there's a picture. I'm not going to describe the picture, but you said, "Quote, your words, not mine. It's on your Twitter feed. Th quote, this is what systemic racism looks like." The Los Angeles Police Department is literally policing only the Black Lives Matter side. Oh, my God. End quote. What do you mean by that? This is still off topic. No, it's not. You're here as an expert telling us, <laughs> advising us, and I'm asking you about your, your, your background. I'm here as an athlete to talk about the effects of climate change on my sport. What a dick. <laughs> I know. I swear. I'm not going to I'm not going to answer for anything that I've ever said ever except for what I want to say about climate change. I mean, seriously? Okay. If you're going to be an expert, you got to answer the questions and stand for what you stand for. Like you have to yeah. back up your claims on Twitter, dude. This is why I always tell my daughter, you're going to tweet something like someday she's not on Twitter now. But if you're going to put something out on social media, you better you better be willing to stand by it cuz forever. Like, Forever. Yeah. That Forever. means pictures, everything you put out there. You better be willing to stand by it. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, all right. So yesterday, big, big day in the Trump household, Baron Trump turned 18. He is a full-fledged six foot eight oh full-fledged adult. Like what are they feeding giant? him? I it's amazing. And he's he's apparently like so, so freaking smart, speaks all yeah. the language. I mean, he's just incredible. So there's this guy, this I, I don't I can't tell if he's a former NBC executive or a current NBC executive. His bio still lists that as his job. But a lot of people call him former executive a guy by the name of Mike Sington, who looks so creepy. Like if you look at his profile picture, creepy looking dude. And it turns out he is super creepy. So yesterday on Barron's birthday, he tweeted this. Baron Trump turns 18 today. He's fair game now. For what, dude? For what? Exactly. What do you want to do? What do you want to do with him, Mike? You creepster. Oh, oh my. my God. So people immediately began calling this guy out, like saying, first of all, if you're saying he's fair game now, that's very threatening. That yeah. sounds very threatening. Weirdo. Or it makes it sound like you're a complete skeeve. So yeah. he deleted the post. And um, and then he made some excuse to Newsweek who asked him about it. He was just like, well, I deleted it because people were misinterpreting it. Well, it turns out people did some digging on this guy and he's been obsessed with Baron Trump for a really, really long time. So oh back God. in 2018, he was like, Baron's celebrating his 12th birthday today. Let's take a look back and like post all these pictures. And then again, uh, this was in 2017. Okay. He posted a bunch more pictures of Baron saying Baron Trump is really cool. Uh, then 2019, first son could be a model. A very fashionable Baron towers over his father, who is 6'3". And then 
again, this is 2020. Everyone's talking about how tall Baron Trump is here towering over Mike Pence. I mean, like the guy has a freaking weird obsession yeah, he does. with Baron Trump. He totally does. Like, yeah. Hello, stalker weirdo. Like, yeah. Watch Yikes. out for that guy. I hope that exactly. I hope that the people in Trump's corner are watching out for that guy because that guy's a weirdo. He's a that weirdo. That guy's a weirdo for real. I mean, like, he can make all the excuses now and delete mm -hmm. his most recent tweet, but dude, you're gross. Like yeah. you're disgusting. Yeah. Oh normal God. dudes don't do that. No, that's not normal. That is not normal mm -hmm. behavior. No. Um, okay. And then lastly, we've got some random sort of newsy things to get to. We talked about this whole banning of TikTok possibility. I still don't know if the Senate's taking it up or what is going on, but TikTok, um, at least some of the time when you, when you get onto the app, some I've only seen it once, but I know this is happening a lot where when you first log into the app, you get this this black screen from TikTok saying, please call your congressman and don't let them ban this app. You know, they're all desperate. And then they give you the number of your congressperson to call. So people who are TikTok like addicts um, are calling and they are freaking out about the possibility that it could be banned. And some of the calls are insane and they sound like this. This is a call that came into Tom Tillman. <clears throat> okay, listen, if you ban TikTok, I will find you and shoot you. <laughs> um, that's people's jobs and that's my only entertainment. And People make money out there, too. You know, I'm trying to get rich like that. Anyways, I'll shoot you and find you and cut you into pieces. <laughs> Bye. Um, yeah. That's insane. Like, you know, like I, listen, when <laughs> I hate TikTok. I wish that nobody was on it. I really wish that nobody was on it. But people are on it now. So that's why, I mean, I've taken the stance of you can't. What we can't put that toothpaste back in the tube. We just can't. And it's one of those things it, like banning it. If we ban it, then we're on that whole slippery slope of the government controlling what's banned and what's not. That's why I've taken that stance. But I got to tell you, years ago, I was like, I freaking hate this thing. I hate the <laughs> Chinese. Ha I hate it. I hate it. And I hate what it does to our kids. And so I don't let my kid on it. I won't let her on it ever. She won't even be able to have it when she's like, as long as she's living in my house, she can't have it. She can't. I don't <laughs> want her on it. When she becomes an adult, she can do whatever the hell she wants. But I don't like it. I think it's terrible for our country. I don't, I just, and as evidenced by that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean this, you know what I mean? Sickos out there, man. I hope they find her and I hope they arrest her. And I hope she goes to jail. I mean, she probably won't, but like the, that is my hope. Um, also, we have talked about this a million times that politics is super local, that you need to be aware of what's happening in your local politics, your local offices. Mm -hmm. And this has never been more true than now. So um, you, you know that Ilhan Omar got elected because the area that she represents is highly filled with Somalis, right? Well, this is also true in a district in Ohio where uh, a guy just won state a uh, state uh, office um, in Ohio, and he did his entire campaign speaking only Somali and talking about Somali issues. And he got elected, you guys, because that's his district. And because these districts are becoming more and more prevalent with like these groups, these communities of people from other countries who do not give a shit about America, they only care about their home countries, that should be sending a big fat red flag to everybody. So now this is Ohio state rep Ismail Mohammed delivering. He delivered his whole victory speech in Somali. He campaigned only in Somali because he does not care if there are other people in his district who are not Somali. He only cares about Somalia. That is it. Yeah. So we're getting a whole bunch more Ilhans all throughout the country and people need to be voting against these people. It's it's worse than Ilhan because at least Ilhan faked it. Yeah. She, she was true. like, I'm going to fake it to make it. She did that. These people aren't even faking it. Like they don't, they just don't care. They're just blatantly like, screw you, man. Screw you, America. Mm -hmm. I'm not American. I'm Somali. And I'm coming here and I'm basically creating a little Somalia in America. And I don't give a shit about America. There's at least she pretended a little bit, you know what I mean? Until she didn't have to. 
Right. So this is even worse to me. And it's because it's like what you always say when you come here and you, you know, you come from a different country, kind of like what your parents did when they came from Poland, you melt into the melting melt. pot. Yeah. You know, you can still have reverence for your mother country or whatever, and you can have respect for it. But at the end of the day, you are American now. So you better freaking melt. And mm -hmm. these people are not melting. They have no intention of melting. They don't care about America. They just want to bring their country here. And that's what they're doing. And it's not okay. None of this is okay. None of it. And it's, ma it's made even worse by the fact that there are non-Somalian Americans, like born and bred here Americans, who want to destroy America. So this is, right. you're about to see a man on the street interview, which was so alarming to me because it's, it's bad enough that you've got like the pro Hamas weirdos all over college campuses. But when you openly say shamelessly as an American that you want America to die, that's like a whole new go. You know what I mean? And I don't yeah. even know. I, I, we used to have treason laws. I don't know how this isn't an example of that, but this is becoming a very prevalent mindset among liberal youth and they are terrifying to me. So you're going to see this is an interesting like interview that you're about you're to over see. here appropriating a space for your own personality. I'm a journalist. You're not a journalist. How do you decide who's a journalist? I mean, considering I was fired as a journalist, you're no journalist. Literally, would you rather be it's your sick of your whole life? You're not doing this for like what the actual conversation is, which is getting rid of this country. Getting rid of this country? Getting rid of America, getting rid of the West. This is what this is for. You want to get rid of America? Yes. Everyone here understands that at some level we need to get rid of America completely. What should we do? Uh, decolonization, land back. Where should we go though? Uh, in our communities. We need to go leave the capitals, leave the, leave the central capitals of commerce, of capital itself. What kind of crazy shit was that? Yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. And nice mask, dude. I know, right? So predictable. Yeah, he's, he's like, I'm, I'm fighting for the man. I'm fighting for the cause. But look at my mask. I'm, af <laughs> I'm afraid of germs. I'm afraid. Shut up. God, it's yeah. Like He's probably living in his parents' basement, too. Like, what an idiot. I just, and you know he's got all the technology. He's taking advantage of capitalism at every I, turn. Of course. Of course. He's going to go get his latte at Starbucks while he's like, and he's going to order it from his Apple iPhone. <laughs> right. But I hate technology and I hate capitalism. God, these, these kids are just, they're unnerving to me. And they make no sense because, again, like, how is he thinking this through? So when you actually say, well, what does that mean? Where should everybody go to their communities away from the Capitol? What are you even saying? You yeah. moron. Yeah, it's None hunger of that games. makes any sense. Yeah, exactly. I, God. Well, that kid. Listen, if there ever is some sort of revolution, he's going to be the first to go. Did you see him? <laughs> Did you true. see him? That Let's all true. look at him. Huh? Yeah. Um, okay. So also this is just fun. Now we, we're going to have a little bit of fun because you guys remember the movie poltergeist, right? Like one of the greats, one of the greatest movies here. ever. Is that it? Is that, yeah. Yeah. It? I mean that. And then do you remember the scene in the swimming pool at the end where all the skeletons were coming up? It's that's terrifying. It's like, that is a, uh, it, a core memory. I think yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, I think you're right. I think mm -hmm. you're absolutely right about From that. From the 80s. If you're a Gen Xer, you remember that if you saw that movie. Yeah. Oh, without question. Mm -hmm. Like that was so terrifying to me. Yeah. And then the screen. I mean, oh, my gosh, that's like one of those. Yeah, it's a core right. memory for sure. Yeah. I just learned something about that movie that has shaken me to my core what? about that scene. Those were real skeletons. Get out. I kid you not. Real corpses were used in the 1982 film. The reason is because it was cheaper and more <gasps> cost effective than using plastic fake, fake ones. Jo Beth Williams did not know that until after she shot the scene. Oh, oh. my gosh. Can you even? That is terrifying. I think that if I she would have if she would have known it. She would have even never. There's no way I could have gone in. There's no way she would have been even more terrified if if she knew it. I can you imagine her acting would have been even elevated. <laughs> could you? Because huh? man, oh my god, that is so, that is a real dead person right there. <gasps> 
Can you? I just cannot. I cannot know this information by myself. So I had to share it. And then I watch was like, it now. Oh you're God. like you're gonna watch that, and you're ne- like, if you ever watch it again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right. Oh God. Ah, I know. I just got the heebies. Also. Wow. Um, okay, and I'm not gonna leave you there because that would be mean. Yeah, so that's gross. Um, one of our audience members, Susan D. Christino, hope I'm saying that right. Sent you say in it again? the cutout. So who was it again? Susan Diagostino. Thank you. Okay. Susan sent a picture of her dogs oh, and yeah. how well. <laughs> it's so cute. It's a little oh, video. <laughs> and this is a video of how well her dogs are behaving with their gait. You know what I mean? Like they've got like a little puppy gate. Little puppy gate. Um, and this is like a, this is a video about how well that is working out. And I, it's precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it <laughs> it's it's great that that is working out well for you i'm so glad that's fantastic <laughs> those are some smart dogs oh my gosh i just love that you're gonna so need much. a bigger gate i think just a little <laughs> and one with a better a little, lock maybe a lock <laughs> on the gate that's right Oh my God. I just love that. Okay. So you guys, here's the deal. So obviously the internet people are not here yet. I still have slow internet earlier when I was trying to review the uh, TikToks and the DDs that we have for you today, they were not behaving well. So we're going to try Daisy's got two DDs today. We're going to try the first one. If it works, we're going to continue on with our show. If it doesn't work, we're going to have to just end the show here because we're not going to be able to do talks or anything else. So just warning you that that's how Mm -hmm. this is going to go down. Um, do you have a preference on which let's, one we try? Let's do the guy that had the stem cell, um, trans. Okay. Let's try that. First. All right. The, so this dude. is a really, really cool. Very cool. Talking about it. All right. Here it is. Let's hope it works. Happy birthday to you. How are you? Two years ago, I got stem cell. Transplanted. From who? From a 26-year-old kid in Baltimore, Maryland. Really? Yep. Oh. He's the only reason I'm here today. Very nice. Yep. We're from Baltimore. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Yep. What's his name? His name was Mike Driscoll. Oh, Mike Driscoll. You. You. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, can you even? And I'm sure that was planned. I'm sure it was. It's a split. I don't care. I that's think set that's, up, Daisy. That's totally fake. It's a it's skit. It's totally fake. It's a skit. <laughs> I can't believe you fell for that, Daisy. You're such an idiot. Yeah. But I... <laughs> and and even though it was like probably they they got that kid there, I just think it's so cool that he got to meet him. Like how so cool, cool is that, right? Mm, so, so sweet. love that. And then, and then the other one was, um, it worked. If, Yay, it worked. It worked. I know. Very <laughs> excited. That it worked. Uh, the other one I, I sent it to you cause I'm like, this is from Carmel high school. And I was like, wait, is this your son's high school? Cause there's a Carmel high school in Indiana, but it's not, it was in what, what, where did New we York. decide it was? This was in New York. It was in, in 20 York. Okay. So it's a couple of several years ago, but it's just, I thought this was so sweet as Ugh. a kid that's autistic. It's so, so sweet. <clears throat> so they gave him a silent ovation because he Cause gets he real triggered by the noise and handle all the noise <laughs> and all the kids did it. can you stand it all the kids is that not the the most precious thing i just that got is so Dara. i just loved it Look at all of them doing that for their classmate. Oh my God. I know, right? See, there's goodness. There there's some is goodness. And she in was the all world, you guys. She goes, you're just gonna have to pick one which one of these you want for my DDs. And I was like, I can't. I can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do both. We have to do both. They're so good. Anyways, I thought that was super sweet. See, some kids are not jerks. Some that's some true. Them, there's some good kids in the world, you guys. So there's hope. For humanity. Yes. I love, love, love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think things are going to work. And that means we've got a few talks. And then you need to stick around because we're going to have a conversation about 
who should pay for first dates um, and some different angles about that because there's a lot of angles that we need to consider here. Um, so first, we're going to show a couple of talks. We've got Casper, you guys. Casper is back um, and he's he is on his game as usual. On my own, <laughs> pretending he's... That dog. <laughs> he doesn't like that song. Oh but my he god! So good. I thought he was singing it. I thought he sang it really well. He's really good. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, then, you're going to have to get a singing dog. I, I actually would love that if they yeah. did it on command. Oh my god, I would mm -hmm. love that. You're going to have to get. Would one. love it. Yeah. All right. And then I think this was in, yeah, Colorado, just within the last week or so, had like a pretty decent snowstorm. And when I say pretty decent, like it was this decent. Okay. This is insane. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, up to my waist. I'm just walking down the driveway. Oh, look, he driveway. loves it. supposed to potty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He really <gasps> likes oh, it, though. I think he does. <laughs> Oh my God. But seriously, is a, how is he going to potty? Is I he just going to go? I guess they do that. Okay. I mean, this is insane. Oh my God. That is it's insane, so though. This is, uh, you guys, listen, I'm sure a lot of you really love snow, but that is something that I do not miss living in Texas. Once I moved here, I was like, oh. I will never, ever miss snow again. I will be well, happy. Well, you may not I have to because it. it does occur occasionally. Every, every once in a while, but people usually freak out. Everybody stays home. <laughs> now but i don't i'm fine if i never see it ever again i'm sorry but I don't yeah know, same i i will not miss uh -huh. that at all when we finally it. move i know uh -huh. it's no like it snowed but it didn't stick on the ground in beaufort i think it was like seven years ago and mm -hmm. everybody it was like celebration time everybody yeah. was people, so excited because they never see it ever people do get very excited about it yeah but i'm like <laughs> nope thank you but no um there is a dog, I forget his name, but you'll hear it over and over again uh, because he's in trouble. And this dog will not stop jumping in the pool despite the fact that the owner does not uh, want that dog jumping in the pool. I love this. So Buster. great. I'm really going. Buster. Buster. He's late for a reservation. Come I here. love this. Come here. Come here, you little shit. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of a fat Ella. Oh, shoot. Is it is it block? It's it's yeah, blocking up. It's doing yeah. That. A good it's boy blocking up for once in your life. Are you done? I love Come it. Here. I think it's Dance. fantastic. I know it's super. It's really cute though. I saw that yesterday. I thought that was the cutest thing. He just would not get out of the pool. He does so it great. over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But that does not bode well for our longer topic. So we're going to probably mm -hmm. scrap that for today. Okay. All right. So we'll, no more talks. Well, yeah. If talks are not working, we're just going to. Because the other one I was going to show you was another prank one, which is great. And it cannot freeze. So I'll just save that for tomorrow when I hopefully have internet working. Although they still okay. haven't come. So. I'm telling you, they'll be there at 10. They'll be there at 10 o'clock. They better be. Yeah. They better be. Mm -hmm. Anyway. that All Those right. were your tiny talks for today. Okay. So are we, are we doing an, a last topic? Or are we going to scrap it for tomorrow? No, because they're talks. I have to show more talks right. to do the topic. Okay. And right. so, so it's not going to work. Okay. I have one thing I want to thank, um, via for our friend via uh -huh. she, she sent so many Easter goodies for us. And so I wanted to say thank you, um, to her because she's I so lovely. Picked mine always. Up I will. I have. Okay. Well, I I'm probably going to ruin your surprise because she's so always so lovely to us. And she always sends things for me and my husband and my daughter and via, I just, you're awesome. We love you so much. And so then, awesome. Look at these cookies. Like you get to, you get to decorate the cookies. Plus she sent candy and like, oh I just, my look, look how great they are though. I cannot wait. I don't have to bake these. Like they're already baked. So I don't have to do anything, which is great for me because oh my I God. So you just only, decorate them? Right. I only have a kitchen because it came with my house, you guys. So I'm taking those on spring break. I know. So you can decorate them and like get the boys to do it with you. Yeah. That's what you I'm gonna do. Talk. I know Gwen and I, we're so excited. So we're gonna do that probably tomorrow. We're pretty excited about that. So, anyways, thank you, Via. You're just Via. so lovely to us. I'm bringing it in. Okay, you guys. People are and saying they need flaps. Can they get okay, flaps? Okay, I'll get it. I'll get some flaps. Hold on. Okay. Do you want to come in here and get flaps? Come here. Astrid. Astrid. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. 
Uh, Astra oh. didn't come, but um, Coda's here. Coda, you want to give me a kiss? Coda, Coda, come here. Okay, all right. Coda says hello. Let's see. Maybe Casey you can Coda. flap him. Can you? Can you get flaps? Can you get flaps? Can you? <laughs> he's gonna give me a concussion if I try to give him <laughs> flap. If I try to make him do flaps, you guys. He's now he's under my desk. So okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get a concussion, but um, slobber, you guys got slobber instead of flaps. <laughs> I, I promise there you, you there's, there's so much slobber if you can. Oh my see God. It. See it? Ew, oh, my look God. at that, you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> that is go. Everybody has a great Thursday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>